if you will bear with me tonight, just give me a little bit of leniency. I might can help you. In Matthew chapter 1, I hope I don't, I don't intend to keep no one longer than normal. But if I do, get you a pencil and piece of paper. And if you need a scratch pad, I've got one. To write some verses down that you can go home and look up to try me out on. Follow me up. If you need a pencil, you're in trouble. Because you gave me mine and I'm going to keep it. <laughs> no, I'm not being ugly, but I don't have an extra pen. Pencil. But anyway... Matthew chapter 1, I want to start reading in verse number 18. And you can remain seated on the account you need your writing equipment. All right, I want to talk to you tonight about Christmas, a memorial, and a message. Just that simple. That simple. And the thing about it is, let me read it first. In Matthew chapter 1, beginning in verse number 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise when as his mother Mary was in spouse to Joseph before they came together she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now that is most important. Amen. That is very most important. All right. And then it said, now in following up on verse number 18, and it said, and when as his, Mary, his mother Mary was in spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on those things. Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. That is important. All right. And she shall bring forth a son. That's not a baby. That's not just a baby. That's not a child. That's a boy. She's going to bring forth a son. Now, that is what the Word of God said. Amen. All right. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, all of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted 
is God with us. That is very important. All right. Jesus, Emmanuel, is the same as God with us. All three are still God. And then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. Did you notice anything about those verses? In those verses alone, you've got the Trinity of the Godhead. You've got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. You've got the Trinity in those few verses. Don't forget that. God set that in there for a reason. All right? But I want you now, I want to talk to you a few minutes. All right? The origin of Christmas. Now, the origin of Christmas celebration and customs. Now, is not revealed or nowhere will you find it in the Word of God. You need to look for it because it's not there. And they came from lands and times and religions in times past. All right? December 25th was first celebrated as Christmas at Rome about A.D. 350. 350 A.D. That stands for after death of Christ. So you look at that. And that's the best I could find. You won't agree with me? I've said it before. You've got a right to be wrong. <laughs> no, you could come up with a better thing better than I can. But thereabouts, somewhere that in that uh, time frame, 350. Rome come up with that Christmas around December 25th. And so Christmas came, it can be a fitting memorial. Christmas can be a fitting memorial. And God has not given us a date of Christ or Jesus' birth. God has not given us a date. Nowhere in the Word of God can you find a date where Jesus was born. And I nowhere that I can find. If you can find it, let me know, please. And I'm count and counting the years from Jesus' birth began in the sixth century. And it is in era at least four years. Four years in era from the sixth century to his birth. So no one actually knows when he was even born. And also the thing about it was, God may be pleased if we remember and proclaim the coming of his son with special rejoicing. I believe God would be very pleased if we rejoice at his coming. And, but we know he wants us to keep more than anything else. Stay with me right here. As I begin to go through this and as I begin to look at this thing, what does God Want us to look at more than anything else. 
God wants us to look at his death. God puts more emphasis. Look in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to go through this tonight. You mark it down. Mark this down in your Bible. And go home and read it. Chapter 11 and in verse number 23 through 29. I won't take time to read everything tonight. Don't have time. But this is where we get the institution of the Lord's Supper. And it, where Paul has written this down, and it says here, For I have received of the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. But look what he said in verse number 24. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take heed, this is my body which was broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Boy, this is where God gets glory. God wants you to remember him. God wants you to remember that he lived and he died for you. And he also said, After this manner also he took took the cup. Uh, now he said uh, in verse 25, uh, he said, this cup is a New Testament. Uh, he said, in my blood, uh, this do you as often as you drink it. Uh, you do it in remembrance of me. Uh, God wants you to remember uh, and proclaim uh, and never forget uh, that uh, you might forget uh, and not remember the day uh, or remember Christmas Day, but God won't want you to ever forget the blood of the Lamb of God. God wants you to remember when you got saved. God wants to remember how you got saved. God wants you to remember who saved you, who was born and bled and died and shed the blood of the Lamb of God. This is the emphasis that God has put on his son. This he's saying, this is important. If we keep Christmas, we need to keep it to worship him. We need to worship him and the thing about it, but let us not neglect to worship at the Lord's Supper. Brother, that is what that's really going to count. But he died for you. Look down at verse number 29. He said, that he for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, uh, he said, uh, he eateth uh, and drinketh. Uh, now, what is he saying? Damnation to himself, uh, not discerning uh, the Lord's body. Brother, God put a lot of emphasis on his body, on remembering himself. God wants you to remember his son. God wanted you. To, he didn't say a thing about remembering Christmas. He didn't say a thing about remembering the manger. He didn't say a thing about remembering no wise men and gold and frankincense and myrrh and all of this your stuff. But he said, boy, if you don't remember my son, you're going to drink damnation to your soul. Boy, I mean, God has put an emphasis on the blood of the Lamb of God. Brother, what is he saying? Now you look next, uh, look in verse 9, the same chapter. But look what he says in verse uh, chapter 11 and verse number 20. Look what he said. He said, when you come together, when you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. You don't come together to eat. You don't come to fool around. 
He said, For in eating every one taketh before another his own supper, and one is hungry and another is drunken. Or, uh, one, they running backwards and forwards and grabbing this and grabbing that. But look what he said. What? In verse 22, Have you not houses to eat in, to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God? He said, and shame them that have not. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. I ain't going to do it. When you come to church and you do the Lord's Supper, hey, buddy, do drink it in reverence unto God. It is a, a holy thing to take the Lord's. You do it in remembrance unto God. You do it to remember Him. Boy, when the Lord's Supper's over with, you don't pass that bar, that cup around and let the kids have it. Brother, you pour it back in the bottle because it's sacred. Amen. It's not to drink what's left over in the house of God. Boy, that's a shame to do it. Amen. I've seen it done or heard about it done one time in this church. And it, boy, I found out about it and I passed a word around it never be done again. Yes. A lady give it to a child. Said, here, just go ahead and drink the rest of this. Boy, I'll tell you right now, boy, that right there is a nun God. That's a slap in God's face. But this has been years ago. But the thing about it is, Christmas should be a memorial and a proclamation with deep practical meaning. Christmas. And not only that, but the story of Jesus' birth is never, is never too well known. It's never too well known. You can tell it over and over and over again. And oh, how precious that story is. Oh, tell the old story. Oh, tell it to me again. Oh, tell it to me again. Here I am, 80 years old, and I love to hear it again. Oh, the night that that, oh, the Lamb of God was born in that little manger. That little old feed box over there. I can close my eyes and I can just see that little granite box. Oh, I can see it where the stock have come in. The cattle or horses or sheep or whatever has licked that rock box out. And they've got it setting up and lights shining down on it. And they said they laid the rock of ages in the hewn out rock. Oh, glory to God. I just wanted to touch it, but you can't. Oh, but I've touched him. Oh, thank God, Don, I've touched him. Oh, I've touched him. Oh, it's still good. And it's good, good. It's good tidings of great joy to all people. Oh, thank God. Hey, boy, you don't have to be rich. You don't have to be wealthy. You don't have to own a lot. Brother, just come to him with an humble heart. Brother, and I'll tell you, you can touch the Lamb of God. Brother, that's all it takes. It's, it's surely a part of the gospel because it's all there. Because you find it there. In uh, Matthew chapter 2, and look what it says in verse number 1. And it says there, and it says this, 
Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. There came wise men. And you can go on and you read that all the way down to verse number 23. And they, but you look and they, they came. And in verse number 16, Herod, he tried to kill them there and all of the coast from two years old and under. He wanted to get rid of them. Oh, they wanted to get rid of him from birth up. Ever since he came, they wanted to get rid of him. They tried to get rid of him, but they can't. They can't. Oh, I'll tell you, they'll never get rid of him because he lives right here. Oh, he lives in my heart. And the thing about it, too, in Luke, in Luke chapter number one, uh, the thing is here in this chapter also, it's very real. In chapter one and verse five, all the way down uh, through that entire chapter, uh, the thing about it, as I read this, I believe there are 80, cha- 80 verses in this chapter. And you can, you can read this whole thing. And as you begin to read it, and you read it down to when you get to verse 80, it said, and the child grew. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts. Now think about it. You think, think about who was this? Who was this at growing? It was John, wasn't it? It was John. Hey, Christ needed help, didn't he? He didn't need it, but he had a ready backer. Hey, brother Michael, he had, he had a, he had somebody behind helping him too. Here, look here. He had somebody right here. And uh, oh, uh, what, oh, Zacchaeus and Elizabeth. Oh, dear God, was they happy? Was they happy? Oh, Zacchaeus, he couldn't run his mouth for a long time there. He couldn't, he couldn't run that jaw. He couldn't say a thing. But I began to read this right here. And the thing about this was, and as I began to look at this and I began to read this thing, but in verse 26, it said that Murray went over there and in the sixth month, he said the angel Gabriel was sent from God to the city of Galilee to Nazareth to a virgin and spouse whose name was Joseph and the house of David and the virgin's name was Murray. Six months apart. And but they just they just they growed up just like that. Oh dear God, why? Because Jesus needed a forerunner. He sent him out there. He said, "Who is that?" He said that's old Beardy John. <laughs> yeah, he's coming out. He's got honey and locusts and all this stuff. He knew James Williams growed bees in CR, <laughs> and he had that, buddy. He had. He had all of these things are going for him. And you know, I looked at that, and then I looked over in chapter two in verse number one, and as you, you go go down through all of this stuff and you begin to look at all of this and you read through thirty nine verses. Thirty nine verses in chapter two. And boys, it'll bless your heart. If you don't have time to read it all, just read 39 verses in chapter 2. All right? Then Now, I'm trying to help you here to get you in the Christmas spirit here. All right? I'm, do, I'm cutting it a little short for you. All right? But then I want you to go over to John, John chapter 1. In St. John's Gospel, in chapter number 1. And now, I want you to look in chapter 1 and verses 1. Chapter 1, verse 1. And in the beginning, 
Boy, here comes John out of the woodwork. And he said, in the beginning was the Word. Boy, old John's setting them straight, ain't he? He said, and the same, and he said, the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. Oh, boy, John, boy, John said, I don't need no recognition, but he does. Boy, he said, hey, uh, he said, was God and the Word was God. Boy, and old John was out there, and he was running them through the creek just fast as he could. He was like throwing them into a washing machine. You ought to come over my house and watch Jean do the washing. Boy, that's just like, he, that's the way it was going. But he looked down and he began to look and he spotted something different and looked in down in verse number 29 and look what he said. And he said, and the next day John seeth the Jesus the coming. Now remember, Jesus is six months. I mean, John is six months older than Jesus now. And now, so John is an old man compared now. All right? But he looked out and he said, and John seeth Jesus a coming unto him, and he saith, Behold the Lamb. Oh, glory to God. Now this was Christmas, boys. Now this is the real thing. And he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away, what? The sin of the world. Boy, I'll tell you. And here he walks up to John, and the old John, he's still dipping him in the creek. He's dipping him in Jordan, and John said, hey, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't need to baptize you, uh, but you need to baptize me. Uh, he said, oh, uh, but I have need but you uh, to put me under, boy. Uh, hey, why? Because uh, he is our example. Uh, brother, i tell you right now, uh, what am I talking about? Uh, you need to look over in Romans chapter 1. Uh, what is God telling Telling us over here uh, in Romans chapter 1 uh, and in verse number 1. Uh, we need to understand what all of this is about. Uh, in chapter 1, uh, and Paul, a servant of Jesus uh, Christ, called to be an apostle, uh, separated uh, unto the gospel of God, uh, which he had promised uh, uh, for by the prophets uh, in the Holy Scriptures. Uh, now look. Look, uh, concerning uh, his son Jesus Christ our Lord, uh, which was made uh, of the seed of David uh, according uh, to the flesh. Uh, boy, he was born uh, of the flesh just like all of us was. He was in a fleshly body, but he was still all God. Amen. He was still all God. What am I talking about? Go to Micah. Go in the book of Micah just to the back door. Go to the over in the Old Testament. Go in the Old Testament, slip your finger over in Isaiah while you're there. And if you want to look at it or write it down. In Micah, in chapter number 5, look in verse number 2. And he said, But thou Bethlehem, Ephrathah, he said, Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, get out of thee, shall come forth unto me, that is to be ruler of Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. Brother, Christ, He has always been and always will be. He has never, God has never ceased to be. Where did God come from? Anywhere He wanted to. Boy, God has, Christmas is Christmas. He is God. Look in Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 7, verse number 14. Look what he said. He said, Therefore God himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name. What? Uh, what did I read in Matthew? Emmanuel. 
All right. But look also in Isaiah in chapter 6. And look what the, I mean, chapter 9, verse 6. Look what the Word of God says. For unto you a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now let's go just a little bit further. Look in verse, or chapter 11. Look in verse number 1 and verse number 2. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, and the Spirit of counsel and might, and the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Brother, what am I talking about? I'm talking about God Almighty. Amen. I'm talking about God having the body of a man, but yet being all God. Amen. Christmas among us. It speaks of God's revelation of Himself all the way through the Scriptures. From the, from cover to cover, it's holy God. And the thing about it, the Old Testament prophesies faithfully and it's fulfilled. And not only that, in miracles, in announcement, by angels, by dreams, it's inspired. I'm just going to give you these references. You write them down, you go home and read them. In 1 John chapter 1, verse number 14. Verse 14, John, in chapter... And, uh, from 14 through verse 9, chapter 14, John, John chapter 1 and verse 14. Then John chapter 14 and verse 9. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 16 through 19. First John chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 through 4. It speaks of God's love, great love, and everything that God ever gave us. Giving His Son, He gave it freely. In John chapter 3, verse 16. Coming in such lowly circumstances as he came in. In Matthew chapter 20 and verse number 28. It speaks of salvation from sin. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 and Luke chapter 2 verse 11. Go home and read these. And you're going to find out who Christmas is. You're going to find out that the 25th day of December, that don't mean so much. But boy, he does. Amen. Now I want to ask you a question. I've run my mouth for it's about six, uh, seven, eight minutes to eight. Somewhere along there, the lane will straighten me out about my watch later on. <laughs> but let me say this to you. In what year A.D. did Rome... That lady wrote it down. Let's stand. 
I could have took this thing on for 30 more minutes easy. And the thing about it is, I could have took it for another hour. But what we need is an understanding that this book is right. And the world is wrong. Amen. The world is just messed up. This world has just got it. They're down to science and down to what they believe and they're forcing you to believe it. And folks, they've got you believing it. They've got to you to accept it. And we're accepting it. I'm not. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's got to be some changes in this world if people's going to heaven. If, we, if folks are going to heaven, I'm going to tell you right now, Folks are going to have to go God's way or they're not going. Amen. It's sad. It's sad that folks are, they're, they're going to miss heaven because they think it's all in literature. It's all in dramatics. It's all in academics. It's all in how you live and how good you are and politics and all of this stuff. Hey, I don't care who you vote for. I don't care where you went to school. I don't care where you live. I, it's not bothering me. I hope you're a millionaire. But you better pray to God that you washed in the blood of the Lamb of God, because that Amen. trumpet's going to sound one of these days. Amen. And if you're not washed in the blood of the Lamb of God, if you're not saved, if you've not confessed your sins, you're going to die without God. Amen. And that's all that's going to matter. That's all that's going to matter. And it's sad. God bless you to Sunday morning.